Hi, I'm Justin Nichols, Mayor of the City of Mantuac, and I'm honored to present to you today the 2022 State of the City Address. This past year, we saw a lot of growth and development in the City of Mantuac, and it's arguably been one of the best years we've seen on record. Just a few years ago, when the Mantuac Company decided to leave Mantuac, our flagship name company decided to leave the City of Mantuac, we all had a weight on our shoulders, and we thought, what is Mantuac going to become? A lot of people stepped up over the last few years, a lot of businesses, a lot of citizens, a lot of individuals, council members, city employees, to change the narrative of Manitowoc. We were, a, we were a city that really relied on two companies for over 100 years, Miro and Manitowoc Company. They employed thousands and thousands of our citizens uh, and brought many great things to the city of Manitowoc over their time here. But it was time to talk about the new story of Mantuac and Mantuac, what Mantuac would be moving forward for the next 100 years. I think we've started that journey with a lot of businesses that have grown in Mantuac since that time, a lot of new ones that have come here that I'll talk about in a little bit, and revitalizing the place where Mantuac started, our historic downtown. So let's get into it right now about all the great things that are happening in the city of Manitowoc. We'll start with two-way streets. Since 1960, 8th and 10th Street have been one way. It happened for a reason. It was the time, it was an era where all communities around the country were moving to one-way streets. It was for expediency. It was to get people quicker to their final destination. And it worked for that very purpose. Looking at what we want downtown to be today, we want to slow down traffic. We want pedestrians to feel safer walking on 8th and 10th Street. And we want to revitalize the 10th Street corridor, especially since we have the River Point District, which I'll talk about in a second. But two-way streets was approved by the Common Council last year, and it's coming in August of 2022. The plans are set, the bids have gone out. There are a few intersections that will be reconstructed in the very near future. Waldo and 8th Street, that is to accommodate a left turn lane going westbound on Waldo, turning onto 8th Street. 11th, Menasha and Wisconsin, and that portion of Menasha will remain a one-way street, but that section will be reconfigured to ensure traffic going north on uh, 11th Street does not turn onto Menasha. And 10th and Park, uh, intersection right across from Tower Tavern. Uh, there will be no more state highways basically on 8th and 10th Street, especially in the residential subdivisions, uh, divisions of 8th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, and as you can see here, this will be the new highway map uh, throughout the city of Manitowoc. So the car ferry traffic actually will be routed, instead of going toward Manitowoc Public Utilities, will be routed right directly into downtown. Uh, true tourists will then have the opportunity now to turn left or right on 8th Street, which only right now can turn right. Uh, so as you can see, we maintain both bridges under state highways and we reroute traffic on the, instead of going on 8th and 10th and 11th, we'd go on Maritime Drive, which is a four lane road and also a beautiful drive along the Lake Michigan corridor there and getting people to their final destination. So again, the change for two way streets will come this year at some point in August. The River Point District is well underway. We purchased this just a few years ago in June of 2018. This is 20 plus acres of undeveloped land just west of the 10th Street Bridge. Canadian National had owned it for a very long time. The city council agreed to purchasing that piece of property for $800,000 back in 2018. And we're already seeing huge improvements with much more to come. Last year in 2021, the council approved $3.3 million in infrastructure. That's for roads and sewers and everything that's needed to build out that area. And this year, the council approved $3.5 million more in infrastructure improvements for 2022. What you'll see this summer is uh, right now, you currently see a new intersection with, which is signalized at 10th and Maritime and what will be River Point Drive. River Point Drive will be going west off of Maritime. Maritime will turn into River Point Drive. That'll be a new road going into the district along the Manitowoc River. Uh, that road will be constructed this summer. There will be a new boulevard, 11th Street, if you want to think of it like that. I'll show you a map in a second, uh, just west of where the new apartments are being built. York and Buffalo Streets will be extended to meet that new boulevard. 
and really exciting, which is going to be just awesome for downtown and this whole area. This summer, we're gonna be adding a river walk along that new road and that uh, on the river, public access to the river with nice parkland right on the riverfront there, kayak launches, uh, boat docks. We're going to be fixing the sheet wall along the river, the old car ferry dock, for those of you who know where that is. Uh, that's where the kayak launch will actually be in that car ferry dock but a lot of new public access space will be added to this district, which is just exciting for downtown Manitowoc. Here's a map that kind of shows what the overall layout is. You can see North 11th Street there and that boulevard. You can see where the River North apartments are being built uh, on that portion. And then Riverview Drive, as I just talked about, going up to where that car ferry dock used to be. And all that will be replaced this summer, added with uh, nice uh, river walk and like I said, kayak and boat launches all along that southern uh, wall there uh, near the 10th Street Bridge. But basically everything to the right of the screen of North 11th Street Boulevard and York and Buffalo and Chicago and River Point Drive will all be uh, paved this summer. The River North Apartments are the catalyst site. That was what we wanted uh, first, a uh, nice big statement uh, and housing. Uh, people, we want people to live downtown. So the River North Apartments are providing just that. They will be on that southern, eastern, southeastern portion of the River Point District. It's an 87 unit apartment complex, which will by far be one of the largest developments we've seen in downtown in generations. It's planned to be completed in fall of 2022. If you get a chance, drive downtown, check out the progress. It's coming along very nicely. We're also going to be doing a lot of harbor upgrades uh, along the Mantuac River. The council approved 100,000 new dollars in the 2022 budget for adding new boat docking along the wall by City Hall. Um, for anyone who's been downtown this last summer or a few summers ago, the recreation on the Manitowoc River of people boating, kayaking, uh, doing just any source of anything on the Manitowoc River is becoming way more popular. Um, we're seeing people from Sheboygan, from, from Chicago, coming to Manitowoc, wanting to dock their boats and spend their days in Manitowoc. So this will help provide even more opportunities for people to boat, uh, to dock their boat along the wall by City Hall. Another cool addition to downtown has been Union Square. This is the former Rudy Rotter Museum, uh, Buffalo and York Streets, surrounded by 9th, or, uh, sorry, 7th Street on the east. Uh, there are eight new condos that were built on the upper floors there, which are all full. Matwa Coffee moved into there. The venue at Union Square moved in. Waves, Yoga Studio, Ignite Dispensary, and the city added a 45 uh, lot uh, parking lot just to the west of these properties. One cool thing about this building is this was on the city's blight plan uh, for demolition. Uh, we didn't think anyone would find any way to make anything of this. And thanks to Mike Howe and his team and his investors, the entire building now is completely occupied. Cool thing that happened this summer uh, was, last summer, was we are officially designated as a national marine sanctuary. So Governor Evers, Senator Tammy Baldwin, and representatives from NOAA and other communities uh, along the National Marine Sanctuary Shore uh, were in attendance to officially celebrate the designation from the federal government. This means we have a national park right in our backyard. And if you can see, it goes from just the bottom part of Kiwani County, surrounding all of Manitowoc County, all of Sheboygan County, and down to Port Washington. This, is, this national park comes with a lot of opportunities for tourism, for education, and bringing federal dollars to our area to ensure that we have clean and safe water for many, many years to come. This was a 13-year process to get this designation, but the fact that we have a national park right outside our back door is something that we have in Manitowoc that not many communities can tout. And it is something that we are going to work aggressively with the City of Two Rivers and other communities, the Wisconsin Maritime Museum, to ensure that, the visit, that we get as many visitors as possible. Uh, Alpena, Michigan, which is another marine sanctuary on, uh, on the Great Lakes, sees well over 100,000 visitors every year 
and we can expect the same, hopefully, in the near future. As I mentioned earlier, there is a, a, boom, a boom of business growth, not just from current businesses, but from people seeking to move to Manitowoc. One of the biggest ones that we've seen is Ammo Inc. They are currently building a 160,000 square foot facility in our industrial park, bringing with it 200 jobs. Brees is another new uh, company to Manitowoc, out of Chilton, but coming to Manitowoc, they occupy the entire Anheuser-Busch facility and RAR malting facility downtown, and they've put millions in additions, and they have future growth, which is amazing, and they will be here in Manitowoc. Lakeside Foods is one of those homegrown businesses over 100 years here in the city. They've done a huge expansion, multi-millions of dollars at their South 30th Street facility. The council and Kaysun just came to an agreement uh, for TIF dollars in a 50,000 50, square foot addition on their facility out in the industrial park. And there's a new large project coming soon, which will be over 200,000 square feet. Other cool things, Bank First announced that they are adding a facility in the industrial park. They continue to grow, and another homegrown business continues to grow here in Manitowoc. Another homegrown DRAM, just outside the limits right now on Highway Q. They are moving to the industrial park in their new facility, which is a beautiful location right off of Interstate 43, as you can see there. Custer Street would be just to the bottom of this photo. Dufek Drive just to the right side of there. A DRAM should be done with their building and their corporate headquarters in the very near future. Redline Plastics just celebrated a ribbon cutting on their original 160,000 square foot facility. As you can see in the picture, that would be the first half that is not covered. Uh, but that was a 160,000 square foot facility and literally just a year later, they broke ground to add an additional 104,000 square foot feet to that facility. That facility should be completed by now. Uh, congratulations to Broadwind, the coolest thing made in Wisconsin by the Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce uh, was the big blue crane, the 1.9 million pound, 275 foot high crane from Broadwind and Kona Crane. Uh, Kona Crane is the main company, but Broadwind is the one that is uh, uh, Wisconsin based. Um, they received uh, a grant for $1.2 million for upgrades at that facility, improving the rail and the opportunity to be able to build these large cranes on that site. So the state uh, was here and Governor Evers was here at Kona and Broadwind to announce that $1.2 million grant. And if you drive by down there, you'll see another large crane being built. And there is another one in the hoppers. The one currently being built is the gray one. The next one should look just like Big Blue. The Bayshore development is the former Elks Club property. Uh, current, just last summer, Bay Care Clinic opened up their facility, that 49,000 square foot facility. There are eight eight unit apartment complexes being built as we speak, most of which are already completed. Angela Senior Living Facility has already been there. Community First purchased land in that area. And there are currently plans underway for a condo development or more apartments on the north side of the property. Again, this is a property that um, had little to no tax base on it for many, many years. And now we're seeing literally millions of dollars in new tax base to support the Bayshore development. One really cool thing that'll be happening this summer and next are trails that will be going through the entire uh, the entire area of the Bayshore, the old Elks Club. So we received a $350,000 grant to put in trails and to connect the Mariner's Trail. You can see the roundabout at the bottom of the screen there. To connect the Mariner's Trail all the way through the development to the Lincoln Park Zoo. So the current owners of the property donated 10 acres of land just along the river there where you see most of the trail um, taking place. Uh, we will be adding a bridge to cross the Manitowoc River into Lincoln Park Zoo. We'll be adding kayak launches. We're going to be adding fishing piers. Uh, just a lot of potential for beautiful recreation. But the really, really cool thing is to be able to connect the Mariner's Trail to Lincoln Park Zoo, especially for our tourists. I think that's going to be a neat new addition to the Mariner's Trail. 
And that is coming mostly this summer. The Rara West Art Museum has a lot of renovations going on. Uh, so they just put up a new sign. They just redid their entire front lawn with upgrades and sculptures and beautiful flowers. Uh, they just did renovations to their main entryway and there'll be more once the new addition is completed. But the big addition will be uh, adding a, uh, an elevator to the building, which will allow us handicap accessibility to the entire museum and mansion but also provide finally for the first time ever an opportunity to add museum space to the third floor of the mansion. Right now, it is simply storage. Uh, we can't have any access up there due to accessibility issues right now, but by adding the elevator, we will finally be able to add even more space to this wonderful asset in the city of Manitowoc, the Rar West Art Museum. Quick reminder and quick plug, uh, if you want easy access to anything City of Mantuac related, whether it be emergency alerts like snow emergencies or parking bans, uh, if you want to know what's happening at the library or zoo or any agenda or minutes for any community, any city meetings, uh, job opportunities, whatever, uh, please download the City of Mantuac app, just uh, either the App Store or Google Play, just type in City of Mantuac and you can uh, easily access it, that app, and you can sign up for any type of notification as you'd like. We highly encourage this, especially for snow emergencies um, uh, or, or any type of emergency to get that immediate notification right on your cellular device. Just new this year, we started a revolving loan program. We used to have one, but unfortunately due to federal and state regulations, we had to nix that program. So we decided instead to create our own locally controlled revolving loan fund. Uh, this is for really focused for small businesses with low interest and flexible payment terms. Uh, I highly encourage anyone who's looking at starting a business or growing your business to contact our community development department to uh, learn more about this revolving loan fund program. Uh, and fortunate, we are fortunate enough also to receive a state grant of $100,000 to add to our locally controlled revolving loan fund. A lot happening at Camp Vitz, which for those who don't know is on the western side of the city limits. Uh, just off of South Parkview Road. Um, this is a beautiful 90 plus acre park. It is all forest right along the Manitowoc River to its north uh, and Woodland Dunes to its south. Uh, we were fortunate enough to purchase some land off of South Parkview Road to put into the city limits to add parking lot, restrooms, and as you can see by the red trail, uh, we're able to safely and more accessibly get people into the park. The goal is to maintain this park as is, as a natural preserve, uh, but now we have the opportunity to, and, and, and biking and hiking and whatever is the case, maybe go down fishing by the Manitowoc River, uh, but now we will have parking and restroom and trails to get people in and out of the park much easier than they had in the past. Speaking of parks, council approved over $650,000 for park upgrades in 2022. There are several parks on the docket that will be upgraded uh, with uh, a lot of different amenities. We have 36 parks in the city of Manitowoc. On top of that, there will be $300,000 for Lincoln Park Zoo. The zoo is going, just went through a, a study to determine what is needed over the next 10 years to be done to ensure that it's maintained but can also grow. Uh, so this $300,000 is split three ways, $100,000 from the city, $100,000 from the Zoological Society, and $100,000 from the West Foundation. So this is what we are considering phase one, which will upgrade uh, a lot of things in the park, but most notably our mountain lion exhibit. There's a lot of some smaller parks that will be upgraded as well. We started a program where we're going to just allot $20,000 annually within the general fund to be able to just upgrade some of those smaller parks one every year. Um, so that's a new thing that's added to the budget and will be every year. There's $200,000 for Mariner's Trail upgrades. That's continuation from last year's monies. So we're looking at upgrading the Mariner's Trail from about Reed Avenue, just past where the Chamber of Manitowoc County is. So we'll, we did a portion last year, if you recall. This will just be continuation. 
we're looking at then doing next year from uh, about the Little Mantuac River to Reed Avenue. Um, there's going to be some shoreline control, shoreline erosion control there as well. And then the year after that, we are looking at doing uh, behind the Y and into downtown and trying to figure out how we can make the experience from the trail to downtown uh, it's just impressive. I mean, we have the Colby already, but even more impressive for especially our tourists who are seeing our downtown for the first time. Also cool, one other thing we're continuing this year, our public arts committee through the RAR West Art Museum are gonna be painting electrical boxes again. So you might've noticed quite a few downtown. We're gonna be doing five downtown, five more downtown this year and five at different uh, uh, schools throughout uh, the city of Mantuck, public schools. Uh, the cool thing about all these um, paintings on these electrical boxes, all the painters find a theme of a piece that is in the RAR West Art Museum collection and that is how they base their painting off of. And we're gonna have QR codes on all of them, so you can just walk up to the, the box, look at the QR code, and see the piece of art from the Rar West Art Museum and the inspiration from the artist to, to paint that electrical box. Cool program that we started a couple years ago. Visit Manitowoc. We have a new City of Manitowoc Tourism Department. We hired Courtney Hansen as the Director of Tourism. This is a change from uh, quite a few years of working with uh, MAVCB, uh, but we're looking at tourism as being a huge industry in Manitowoc, and we want 100% of our room tax revenues to go toward tourism. We're creating a new brand of Visit Manitowoc. You'll see that rolling out over the year here. Uh, the goal really is to become more interactive and virtual. Like I just said with the QR codes on the electrical boxes, it's so easy to get so much information to people uh, with, with the click of your, your cell phone or, or whatever you have. Uh, we want to make sure that we are going to the tourist and not forcing the tourist to come to us for information. We want to be as out there as possible for the tourist to see everything that uh, they can here while they're here in the city of Manitowoc. And the visitor center will be uh, located at the car ferry dock this summer. Uh, we're going to have the staff of the tourism department there to greet all the visitors from the car ferry. The car ferry is also looking at doing two day sailings again, which is awesome. So it'll be nice to see when she makes her maiden voyage after being nicely repainted. The 2022 major road projects will be Kellner Street. Uh, that is from Fleetwood to Menasha and South 7th Street from Franklin to Madison. Uh, again, we will be doing a small portion of Washington Street, this time from South 25th to South 21st. That'll be just an asphalt overlay, just like we did uh, last summer on a section of Washington Street. Uh, but this probably most likely will be the last time we as the city put any money into Washington Street as we finally got recognition from the state to start the process of a full reconstruction of Calumet Avenue and Washington Street starting in 2029. The council will be actually putting some money into the budget next year to start the engineering, the design and all that. So that'll be 2023. And it's just going to continue from there. But originally we were told mid 2030s is when the state would consider this. Uh, we finally got acknowledgement from them that it is indeed on their plans and that they plan, hopefully, 2029, a portion of it, and probably 2030, just like they did with Waldo Boulevard, a two-year section, but that would be a full reconstruction and finally on the docket. The big one planned for next year is Reed Avenue. Just quickly on the city's finances, the city's finances are very healthy. Um, the debt has decreased for the 13th consecutive year. We have a AA uh, uh, AA minus, well, the minus is actually a, not a bad thing, with a positive outlook bond rating. Um, that's an increase from 2018. So we have an actual, we've been increasing our city's outlook uh, with our bond ratings, which is a good thing because our interest rates are based off of our bond rating. And AA minus is actually a very high rating uh, for a city to receive. Our undesignated reserves are, are at 5.3 million, which they were at just about 17,000 uh, 12 years ago. So we've been consciously trying to put money back into our undesignated reserves, which helps our bond rating. Um, knowing when we go out for debt that we could possibly pay it back is a good thing. So um, the undesignated reserves are very healthy for a community our size as well. 
And last year we saw a 5.56% decrease in our electric rates. We haven't seen an increase in our electric rates since 2009. We have a very well-run utility with more great things from the utility to come. That is the state of the city as of right now. As I mentioned, so many great things are happening in our community with so much more to come. Uh, the council, the city staff have been very supportive of our efforts to redefine what Manitowoc will be moving forward. And I think uh, focusing on the industrial park, our manufacturing, our, our local businesses, helping them grow, attracting new ones to the area because of our quality of life, uh, our access to clean water, our school system, our, our wonderful school system, uh, we're going to see a lot of growth that where just a couple of years ago we might not have thought the same. Uh, but we're moving forward in the right direction, focusing on quality of life. And if ever you need to contact me, please feel free. My information is on the city's website, which is mattwalk.org. You can call me at 920-686-6980. Email me at jnichols at madtalk.org or just stop over to City Hall and set up a meeting with me. Until next year, thanks.